This is the Friday, February 3rd, 2017 version of the Market Plus segment. Joining us now is John Roach. John, welcome back. Thanks, Mike. Hey, it's good to have somebody with a with a, with a, a little different sentiment than we had with Darren Newsom last week. He was very concerned about demand as we look out to the future, but his bright spot last week was the cotton market. There's another bright spot this week. Cotton continues to climb. Are we just are we still just buying acres? Is it global demand? What's happening? It's global demand. Uh, the Chinese demand has been bigger uh, than what was anticipated, and uh, and it's and it's and it's put it's created a bull market in cotton, and that continued this week. Where are we at? Uh, do you guys watch buy signal, sell signals on the cotton side? Uh, we'd be in a sell signal on cotton. Okay. We'd be selling into the strength. All right. And increments in case this thing keeps running. Absolutely, in increments. Yes. When we watch the cotton market historically, do rallies. I guess, how does it work to, you know, we get a corn rally, you can kind of spot some resistance points as we go up. In cotton, it's been a long time since we've been up here close to 80 cents. What do you watch to determine when a move might be coming to an end? That's a really good question. Uh, you look for uh, uh, resistance spots. Uh, uh, looking at, uh, you got to get pick up some bigger charts and start looking back of where did we stop price advances or, or where were prices held on the decline uh, earlier? Okay. Because those those you call them a hot, hard spot in the market. Those tend to repeat themselves, and so we look back in a little bit of history for that. All right. And eighty cents in cotton is always a big number. Oh, it is? Yes. Okay. Is a big so number. you're locking in some sales before we get there just in case. Well, we're just, we're just getting sell signals, and so we're just following through on them. All but right. We're, but we're not being aggressive because it's still early in the season to do that. Okay. All right. We've got a question here from Chad in Randalia, Iowa. He's on Twitter at Hort for Size, a Cyclone fan over there. Chad wants to know, the corn market is at levels we haven't seen since June of 2016. Is it time to price the 2017 new crop? I don't think so, Chad. The, the, we look at four key market indicators. Uh, the first are sell signals. We're not in a sell signal on corn right now. Uh, secondly, we, uh, we look at the month, the calendar. February is the wrong month of the year to sell corn. Uh, then we look at, at uh, where the uh, uh, USDA uh, uh, price forecasts are and are we above those, uh, those levels or not. Uh, and we're, we're not at the upper edge of that level. And then we look at the money flow. We want to see where are the speculative traders at and they're actually barely long the market. So we really don't have very much uh, uh, in the way of support from them. We really would like to have them fully committed to the market, and they're not, and we believe they probably will be as we get into the growing season. So, so we're simply making sales on strength in order to generate 30 to 45 days worth of cash flow needs, and we're holding the majority of our sales and all of our new crop corn sales, all of them, we're holding off waiting for April, May, June. Okay, so as of now, you have not advised any sales on new crop corn to date. We're at zero percent sold. Uh, not since last spring. Okay, oh, last spring, okay, perfect. And now, so, we've got a second question, same vein. Philip, our friend up in Ontario, Canada, he's on Twitter at Agridome. Phil wants to know, December corn fluttering near $4 again. We're getting into that spot that farmers psychologically were going, hey, and he's Canadian as well, so that's, you know, it's a lot higher in Canadian money, you know, on <laughs> the loony. He's looking at uh, corn fluttering near $4. What calendar dates are important for this contract to get hedged before July 4th? Do you look at calendar dates other than months of the year for signals? We look at months of the year, okay. March, March, April, May, June, July. Those, okay. are, those are our primary sell months on corn. Uh, and so uh, before we step out and make a sale, we want to have something that's working. Uh, at least it be back up into a sell signal, which we were a couple of weeks ago. We're, we're confident we'll get more of those. And we'd really prefer to get out into March and April um, uh, before we make those sales. N unless you really like the price. I mean, if you really like the price, uh, take the rally, sell a little bit, there's nothing wrong with that. But from a standpoint of where you want to make big uh, incremental sales, we think that's still out ahead. Okay. Now there's been a lot of chatter, and you work with growers from across this country, of 88 to 90 million acres of soybeans going in the ground this spring. 
What's your take? Are you hearing that from, from producers on the ground at meetings you go to around the, the country? I am. Okay. I am. And so uh, uh, the attitude certainly is that we'll have, have a few more bean acres go out. Now, will be a few more, a lot more. Now, that's the question that's going to be a little bit more. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. But uh, uh, beans uh, yields last year were good. And prices were not so bad, and we and we have decent prices now relative to corn. So, uh, so for a lot of people, beans look like a better crop to plant this year than corn. All right. Looking out into the future, we've got a question from Alyssa in Iowa. She is on Twitter at Farmer Alyssa. Alyssa wants to know what issues slash policy have the greatest potential to impact agricultural commodities in 2017. Wow. Um, I would say administration policies. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I, I, seriously, I'm laughing a little bit, but in all seriousness, we don't know what the new administration really plans on doing. Uh, we know what campaign promises were made, and for the most part, it looks like the administration's walking down that list of campaign promising and sta promises and staying pretty close to what the list was. Uh, but what's really going to happen and how our negotiations are going to go uh, for uh, the, uh, the, with the Mexicans and the, and the Canadians, we don't know. How the situation is going to materialize itself with Canada or with China, we don't know. I mean, so these are really big customers that we have some really big question marks, and we're just going to have to wait and see how they're answered. Uh, as to, so those are the policy things uh, to, uh, to be looking forward to. And as it stands today, my understanding is NAFTA renegotiations will happen. And I, I read that Mexico plans on starting May 1st. Is that kind of what you're hearing as well? It's we are going to be at least opening up that agreement to to poke around. <laughs> I think that probably started last week. Okay. Uh, or was it this week that, uh, that uh, uh, the president uh, talked with, uh, uh, with his counterpart in Mexico? So, I mean, I think that process is already happening. Okay. Uh, what will be interesting to see is how does it, where does it go? Uh, are, we, uh, are we going to be able to, uh, uh, to have an amicable agreement that everybody looks and says, you know what, we can live with this? Or are we going to have something that's going to have some problems in it for one side or the other? And of course, since Mexico Mexico is our number one corn buyer. Uh, we have to be really careful uh, on the impact that that might have to that on our corn demand. Yeah, corn and pork are they? Corn and pork. Okay. Yes. Yeah, big big customer down there south of the border. Final question, again similar vein. This is from Lyle in Sydney, Iowa, and we talked on the program this week about ethanol. And so Lyle's question is: Looking at the cabinet that we have, uh, the administration has set up, he's wondering: Are we going back to a petroleum-based economy? instead of towards our goal of a bio-based economy. What are you, it's a big picture question, John, but what are your thoughts? Well, we're in a, a uh, oil-based economy with hopes that we can go toward more renewable fuels economy and liquid motor fuels, uh, ethanol, uh, and wind energy, solar energy, and so forth. Uh, and we're continuing to do that. I mean, I was in Nebraska last week, and, uh, and I passed several uh, wind turbine blades that were being pulled down the highway. Now, maybe they were repairs, but I think they were new, probably new installation. And so we're continuing to, to see some of that. And uh, our ethanol production has been ahead of the pace yes. that we expected. We're going to outrun the government's forecast, or it appears like we are for the year. And so I don't think we want to look and say we're going backwards. This, is, this has been and continues to be a long-term process going forward. The question is, are we going to slow it down? Are we going to continue at the pace we've been, or could we maybe even find ways that we could speed it up a little bit? Okay. You know, you talk about those wind turbine blades. You know, every day, every week when I'm on 80, coming to Des Moines from Grinnell, there's there's a load of them that I pass go in both directions, and I believe they make some of them at least right in Newton, Iowa. So yes, there's they do. yes, so they are plugging around. So we've got a final question for you. We always like to ask our analysts to define or help explain certain concepts, and uh, this one I, I think I think you should make short work of this one, John Roach. The question is why should producers pay attention to the fertilizer market? <laughs> because it's a huge input cost on the farm, uh, and it moves around. It moves up and down. We we started covering the fertilizer market in our newsletter uh, because of the interest producers have in trying to make better decisions on their buying patterns. Uh, rather than simply buying because the, my supplier has it available now, uh, there's 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 some better processes to use. And what what should a producer be watching? Uh, daily markets. What can give them an indication as to where that market might be headed? Is it crude just the best one to watch? 
Uh, I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not sure. What, what we've learned to do is we've learned to watch some fertilizer consultants that write a very good piece for our letter. And so we don't, we're not able to actually publish it daily because there's not daily information. We actually publish it about every other week. Okay. Uh, so that's about how fast the information is moving that we're trying to track and that we're trying to help our customers with. Perfect. Well, John Roach, thank you so much for taking the time to join us this week. Thank you very much, Mike. Join us again next week when we'll take a look at how a devastating tornado pulled a community together. And if you find value in our work, please consider clicking the Donate Now button on our website. So until then, thanks for watching or listening. I'm Mike Pearson. Have a great week.